So team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. Um, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Uh, thank you so much for showing like a, a lot of support through everything that's going on right now. Um, we always talk about how timing is everything. I'm recording this at 4:54 p.m. Um, just to give y'all a heads up, I ain't trying to like kill nobody vibe or anything, but just want to let y'all know. Um, at 4:32 p.m., I got an email from this company that I was sponsored by, but they said, "Hey, uh, just to let you know." Um, we no longer sponsoring you. So I, I just felt like the timing was like, oh, okay. But we gonna keep pushing, man. So we, we gonna keep pushing, but we'll, we'll talk more about that another time. But what we wanted to talk about was uh, today, Eric DaCosta, I mean, it's, it's a lot going on, but at the same time, it's a little going on with the Ravens. Uh, Eric DaCosta and John Harbaugh both spoke to the media today uh, from the combine, uh, Eric DaCosta, he came out, of course, he was asked about Lamar Jackson. We knew he was going to get asked about Lamar Jackson. Um, really didn't say much. Said they're hopeful that a deal gets done, you know. But, I mean, even though him saying this is not really news, he did say that they have a contingency plan. He said they have, like, I think he said five or six different ways that they're going to go about doing stuff uh, based on everything. So, basically letting it be known, like, hey, if Lamar is here, uh, then we got something that we're going to do. With, and I... Obviously, it's uh, based off of Lamar either signing the franchise tag, an exclusive tag, if they got to play him on a non-exclusive tag, if they got to give him an extension, or whatever happens, or if they don't go with Lamar, if they go with a free agent quarterback, if they roll the quarterbacks that they have, if they draft the quarterback. So, yeah, that's about like five, six options right there. So, there you go. So, that that wasn't really news. Eric DeCosta really ain't say much. He did talk about how two years ago, when him and Lamar first started talking, that um, he just... Lamar and him, they agreed to keep everything on the hush, to not be putting everybody business out there and whatnot. Okay. Uh, something that I did, I appreciated that, but something that I also appreciated was um, his honesty at the wide receiver position. He said, we just, we just ain't got it yet. We ain't got it yet. He talked about how they just haven't had an all-pro guy yet, um, but he said they're still going to keep trying. They're still going to keep trying. They're still going to keep swinging and whatnot. I said, like, all right, DaCosta, cool, man. I, I feel you. Um, I just think it, there should be a different approach taken uh, at the position. But that's a mix of things. It's not just the draft. It's not just free agency. It's not just trade. It also got to do with scheme and everything like that. But, again, not, not another topic for another day. I don't feel like getting into all that right now. Um, but Eric DaCosta, his presser, it, he didn't really say nothing crazy. So... Uh, he talked about draft picks, of course, how he want to get more draft picks. and whatnot. We know he's going to get more draft picks. There's no way no, no Baltimore Ravens with no Eric DaCosta going into no draft with no five draft picks. That just ain't happening. Um, now, I had turned it off after a little bit because I'm like, okay, Eric DaCosta, he ain't really saying nothing. So I turned it off. I'm not sure, and I didn't hear about him being asked about Patrick Queen's fifth-year option. So if he was asked about it, can y'all somebody let me know? Um, but I didn't, I didn't hear anything about that. Um, John Harbaugh. He also came to the press, or he had a presser. Of course, again, same thing. He was like, hey, I'm letting Eric DaCosta and Lamar Jackson, they handle the contract talks and whatnot. Um, and he said, hey, I'm, I'm staying out of it. He said, I'm, I'm Team Raven or something like that. And I'm like, oh, okay, Harbaugh. Yeah. Anyway, um, something that Harbaugh did say had a lot of people in an uproar. Had a lot of people in an uproar. And there was, there was the quote um, where Harbaugh talked about he didn't really have the time to break down the Georgia's offense on film. During the uh, Todd Monken interview process So uh, <laughs> I know a lot of people are like Oh see well there goes Harbaugh Good for nothing da, 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 da. A lot of people saying a lot of stuff And I get it Because I saw people bringing up the whole X's and O's thing Like oh Harbaugh he's a special teams coach He doesn't know X's and O's um, people, people saying that Oh if Harbaugh was looking at film He wouldn't even know what he'd be looking at anyway Because he don't know X's and O's da, 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 da. And all that stuff. Somebody said Harbaugh needs to be fired. Okay, cool. But um, when I saw that, I was like, yeah, that that is something right there. A head coach hired an offensive coordinator that he didn't get a chance to look at film with this offensive coordinator on. He really didn't. Um, and I even talked to one of my guys about it. We laughed about it. And uh, I just I just thought it was funny. But then I really thought about it like, wait a minute. What that tells me, just my opinion, just my opinion. I could be wrong. 
But what that tells me, if Harbaugh did not look at film on Todd Munkin, if Harbaugh wasn't able to break it down and all that, didn't even really take a look at it, if he wasn't able to do all that, still hire Todd Munkin, that would let me know that it's not really Harbaugh's choice. Todd Munkin wasn't really a Harbaugh hire. Yeah, we heard all the stuff all year. Um, I forgot what his sister's name is. Um, but she put Harbaugh on the Todd Munkin and then he brought him in. But, but I just, I don't think it was a Harbaugh hire. I don't think it was his decision uh, to bring Todd Munkin in. I think it was a Ravens decision, but I think it went above Harbaugh. And that wouldn't surprise me, especially depending, depending on how everything goes this offseason. I, I think that with the Ravens and Greg Roman mutually parting ways, um, I, I think that the Ravens might have been like, look, we, we got it. Maybe Eric DeCosta was like, look, I got it, Hobbs. I know you usually make these decisions or what, but I got it this time. I don't know, though. I don't know. That's just a guess. It's just a guess. Because maybe they decided, you know what, we're going to alleviate you with some of the power real quick. And we'll, we'll take care of the offensive coordinator. Uh, Harbaugh was asked about Lamar Jackson's input. And he gave one of them Harbaugh answers where it goes here, there, and everywhere and whatnot. So, I mean, it was whatever. I ain't really like, like, oh, man, well, he sure showed Lamar didn't have any. I was, just, I was whatever about it. Like, okay, cool. Um, but Harbaugh, I tell you one thing. Eric DaCosta, he looks the same all the time. He looks the same all the time because I feel like with, as a GM, I feel like you're working 24-7. But as a head coach, I don't really feel like you are. I feel like you're working a lot, but not as much as a GM. Just my opinion. I don't, I don't know nothing from nothing. But to me, Harbaugh looked very refreshed. He looked very refreshed. He looked like he took a nice vacation, and he just looked whew, a lot better than he had been looking, especially during the season. Because uh, there was some time the Harbaugh was just looking rough, like really rough. Um, he did. He was asked about Lamar Jackson. Why didn't Lamar Jackson travel with the team? Why didn't he play? And Harbaugh said because he was injured. Because he was hurt. Straight up. And it's too late now, obviously. I wish we could have got more of this like, straightforwardness when it came to the injury. I wish we could have got more of that during the season. Because that whole competitive advantage thing, I don't know. But... Anyway, that was that. That was that. I um, there was some other stuff floating around uh when it came to the Ravens because apparently the NFLPA they did a, a survey that was taken by players apparently um about the teams about uh the different categories that that it listed was the treatment of families the the food service and nutrition. Uh, the, how they would rate the weight room, uh, the strength coaches, the training room, the training staff, the locker room, and team travel. So all of those things were apparently voted on, and, and there was a survey that was given to players on, on each team. I don't know who the players were. I don't know how many of the players that took the survey were. I, I don't know. We don't know. Um, but it, it was very interesting. So um, when you – then this is from the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, it said that as far as the treatment of families – the grade that they got was a C plus. And I, I was shocked at that one. I really was. Because even just as a fan, um, the Ravens, they, they do a pretty good job of how they treat families and stuff, especially how they do for the kids and whatnot. They could use a little more, a little more organization, but overall they do a really good job. Uh, anytime we've gone to training camp, um, the way that they, they got stuff set up for the kids, like especially the open practice too, they do a lot for the kids and families and stuff. They, they do a really – and that's just as a fan. So I would think, like, as an actual player or employee of the Ravens that it would be even better. But I, I don't know what goes on behind the scenes. But they, they, they were given a C plus, So a little, I guess, average. Yeah. Uh, as far as food service and nutrition, they were given a B-. minus. Uh, as far as the weight room, they were given a C plus. Now, here we go. As far as the strength coaches <laughs> – they weren't only given an F. They were given an F minus. Do y'all, like, was it just me? Because I remember uh, back in elementary school, I remember we, we used to get E's. Did y'all get E's too? Did y'all get that too? Because I remember we used to get E's. I remember I first, um, when did I first hear about F's? 
Was it middle school or high school? I don't even remember. But we used to get E's. Did, it, did any of y'all get that too? Like, let, let me know. Because I feel like sometimes I'll be seeing stuff like this and, and, and then I think back like, man, I remember getting E's. But maybe I was the only one. But anyway, um, strength coaches, they got an F. Now, um, what was highlighted in, in, in the overview? Uh, it said the Baltimore Ravens come in ranked 17th overall in our team guide. The main area of concern stemming from player respondents' opinions are a desire to improve the quality of the food, weight room equipment, recovery resources, and strength staff. So, anyway, let's keep going. Uh, at the core of these issues is the team's former head strength coach, Steve Saunders, who the Ravens recently parted ways with. Assessment of him by player respondents was markedly negative. Only 38% of player respondents felt that they receive an individualized plan for their strength, strength training, and many complained about the training room is understaffed. Mm. That's a lot of detail, but I wish we could have got even more detail. I mean, we got it from Derek Wolf, but anyway. Uh, the players do believe in Ravens owner Steve Bishotti's commitment to high quality, as 100% of them believe he is willing to invest in upgrades to the facility. So, yeah. Uh, the, that F minus got highlighted even more. Uh, continuing, uh, the training room, they were given a C. The training staff, they were given a B plus. And then the locker room and team travel, they both got an A for that. So the locker room apparently is good. I mean, whenever we see little videos of the locker room, it looks pretty cool. They got the little purple lights here and all the little Ravens logos and everybody name and stuff. It looks like everybody got space, too. They don't look all cramped up together and whatnot. But, again, that's, I'm just going by social media. I've never been in a Ravens locker room before. Never had media access, anything like that. So I don't know what it's like in there. Uh, but then in team travel, I mean, you, you see uh, sometimes I like how they show the little video. Sometimes they'll ride the train. If it's a, a close trip like they did for the Jets game, um, they'll they'll fly. And then, of course, you know, Marlon Humphrey, he gives us a little background on the team travel because he'll be doing his video. Well, after they win, he'll be doing his videos and stuff after they lose. Yeah, yeah you don't know see Marlon Humphrey. But that's OK. I get it. I get it. But um. So yeah, that that was just a nice little nice little bonus um, that the NFL PA did, and, and I guess they they like you know what, it's slow right now. Just just throw in a little extra survey, throw in a little bonus survey for everybody while they're waiting for free agency, they're waiting for the draft and whatnot. Everybody's waiting. The NFL is waiting to see what happens with Lamar. They like throwing a little survey. Just just give them something extra. So that was it. That was cool. Now, um, back to uh, Eric DaCosta when he talked about Lamar, um, when he talked about how it's, it's different. It's different territory when you're negotiating with somebody who doesn't have an agent. Obviously, he got a little experience with that. He did it with uh, Roquan Smith about a month and a half ago. How long ago that was? Maybe longer. Yeah, no, about a month. No, maybe like two months ago now. But regardless, um, and I mean, again, he talked a little briefly here and there about Lamar Jackson contract and whatnot. Um, but again, bottom line, even a story, what the, the story came out either earlier today or maybe it was yesterday that Lamar Jackson is being advised by the NFLPA to really go for that fully guaranteed contract. Apparently, allegedly. But again, any story that comes out, any update that we get, well, not any, depending on what it is, but. We don't know. Again, I'm going I'm to I'm keep repeating that. We don't know. We don't know what's going on. We don't know how the talks are going. We just don't know. Now, one thing that was funny, um, I think, I know John Harbaugh said it for sure, how he talked about, like, uh, he, he had text Lamar. I think Eric DeCosta said the same thing, too, but um, said they, players don't really do phone calls like that, but they do text. Did he say he text Lamar? I think Eric DeCosta said he text Lamar, too. But... I just thought that was interesting. I, now, Harbaugh did say, hey, I, I did talk to Isaiah Likely, though. I talked to Isaiah Likely at the end of the season. We had a nice long conversation and whatnot. I said, okay, cool. But, yeah, the, the pressers, they weren't anything crazy. They weren't anything wild. Uh, again, I know that the one that quote floating around about Harbaugh not, not breaking down the film, not looking at the film, not knowing the film on top market and whatnot, it was more funny than anything. Um, cause again, I know people up in arms over it. I'm just like, all right, whatever, cool. But again, that to me, that just makes it look like it wasn't his decision to bring in Todd Monk. And not that he was against it, but it just, the decision to hire the offensive coordinator, in my opinion, from him saying that, 
that just tells me it went over his head or over him um, to somebody higher up. So anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all a lot, like a whole lot. Thank you for everything that y'all have done. Uh, thank you for rocking with us, especially doing <laughs> all of this that's going on. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We out.